The monologue is entitled, I Heard a Rumor. There was a pop song on the charts by Bananarama back in 1987 with the same title as this morning's monologue. A rumor is defined by the Oxford Dictionary and by this reporter as a piece of information spread among a number of people which is not confirmed and may be false. I say again, information not confirmed, which may be false. And that's the key word, false. And yet, rumor appears to have taken the place of evidence, not only in our society, but rumor has also replaced something called the rules of evidence in our nation's various levels of judiciary. Here's a recent case in point. Lawrence Van Dyke is a nominee for the infamous Ninth Circuit as President Trump tries to drain the swamp by changing the nation's most dangerous and progressive left-wing court from a court that serves the progressive left coast to a court which serves the best interests of the nation. Van Dyke is a member of a far right-wing organization called the Federalist Society. Oh no! His career in law has been to fight overreach by the federal government. That's what he is most known for. Imagine that, a constitutional federal judge. Yesterday, Judge Van Dyke cried during his confirmation hearings when he was lambasted in a scathing letter to senators on the confirmation committee by the American Bar Association. That's right, the main organization of this nation's attorneys thought it proper and necessary to attack this man, not with any evidence, but with rumor and innuendo. So apparently the American Bar Association interviewed a number of LGBTQ people and asked them their opinion about Judge Van Dyke and whether they believed that he would be fair to them in his judicial rulings because of their sexual preference. Apparently, many of the LGBTQ surveyed had grave concerns about the fairness of the Trump nominee when it came to those who identify as LGBTQ. I will bet you that not one of those surveyed had ever heard of Judge Van Dyke, let alone be familiar with him or his past judicial rulings. The American Bar Association chose not to present any evidence against the judge in contesting his nomination. They chose instead to object to his nomination based on rumor and innuendo. There was not one shred of evidence mentioned or presented which proves that Judge Van Dyke had any bias towards anyone at all, let alone LGBTQ people. According to the judge's enemies from the American Bar Association, the judge supposedly refused to say during his ABA interview affirmatively that he would be fair to any litigant before him, notably members of the LGBTQ community. I guess the rest of us don't matter to the American Bar Association. They don't give a damn about whether this judge would be fair to most Americans. They are only concerned about one small minority group. Even the American Bar Association has been corrupted by the deep state. The judge declared his innocence and insisted that, quote, I did not say that, Van Dyke told Senator Josh Hawley, Republican from Missouri, with tears welling up in his eyes. The judge said, and I quote, no, I did not say that. I do not believe that. It is a fundamental belief of mine that all people are created in the image of God. They should all be treated with dignity and respect. Van Dyke also said that he was not given a fair opportunity to respond to the allegations during his ABA interview. He said when he was confronted with the concerns about his views and he began to answer, he was told that they were running out of time and he was shut down. Who was in charge of that American Bar Association interview, you might ask? Was it Adam Schiff? Because that's the way Shifty Schiff operates, isn't it? That interview was conducted by a woman by the name of Marsha Davenport, the lead evaluator with the American Bar Association. Senator Hawley noted that Davenport once contributed to the campaign of a judicial candidate who was running against Van Dyke. This sounds like a Hillary supporter angry at President Trump because he won. I thought the ABA was supposed to be opposed to any form or possibility of conflict of interest. I guess that does not comply with their own standards when a Christian judge is standing before these phonies involved in this confirmation process. To those of you listening who are part of the gay and lesbian communities, I say this. You have worked hard and struggle to gain acceptance for your sexual preference and lifestyle from middle-class America. 
Do you think that what was done to this judge furthers your efforts of acceptance in our society? I'm sorry, but it does not. It only further divides us and makes it more difficult for your acceptance. We should not kid ourselves. The Ninth Circuit is an active battlefield in America's new civil war, with sitting so-called judges trying to turn this nation into a banana republic. And President Trump's conservative nominees under attack because they are true to the law and worst of all, they are Christians. But we have seen this television rerun before. We know this script very well. We can all recite it from memory. Christian men and women of faith treated like the enemy of the deep state. Imagine that people of faith under attack from one nation under God. The fourth illegal branch of government uses the courts to legislate and control our elected legislative branch. The House and Senate cannot serve the people when they are under the control of the deep state and the courts. And now we know that the American Bar Association is embedded in and an integral part of the swamp. How about that? Who would have thought it possible? Perhaps no judge has been more a faithful servant of our Lord than Justice Kavanaugh. But in their opinion, his service to our Lord automatically disqualifies him from serving the nation on the Supreme Court. Did they not use rumor and innuendo in an attempt to torpedo his nomination? But they also set out to destroy Judge Kavanaugh the man, destroy his faith, his marriage, and his children. And it was Justice Kavanaugh's young daughter who ended up teaching them a lesson in forgiveness when she offered to pray for her father's lying accusers. I am sure that Spartacus and the rest of them have already forgotten that lesson. What do you think? And I'm sure you know very well Kamala Harris and Maisie Hirono, two women senators who have made it known of their hate for people of faith, especially men, and especially Roman Catholics. Last year, they were sitting on a Senate committee charged with confirming another Trump nominee to the federal bench by the name of Brian Boucher. Judge Boucher also made the mistake of joining one of the world's most notorious alt-right white supremacist hate groups, otherwise known as the Knights of Columbus. I doubt that either one of these left-wing socialist anti-Catholic bigots has ever tried to understand what the Knights do within their faith-based community. All Harris and Hirono know is rumor and innuendo, and they used it in public and on a Senate committee with evil intentions. The Knights hate and discriminate against women, harass women who are entering abortion centers, you know, that kind of stuff. Safe to say that neither of these two women has ever stepped foot and any KFC council to learn all the work and money raised for children with Down syndrome or other charities for which they raise millions of dollars year after year. The Knights of Columbus is a respected fraternal organization just like the Masons, consisting of men who hand out coats to needy children, promote devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, support crisis pregnancy shelters, and each year in the March for Life in Washington. How do I know that? I am a Knight of Columbus myself. But because of these lies and rumors, the Knights and all who belong to them are just plain evil and have no place on the federal bench. That is what they think. And no, I don't expect the Knights to change their name to the Knights of Indigenous Peoples anytime soon. By the way, I have not heard of anyone going through Senate confirmation attacked by any socialist Democrat because they were involved in Freemasonry. Think about that. Masons never get any crap. Why is it only the Knights of Columbus and Catholic men? Judge Van Dyke was criticized by some for getting emotional when he was being attacked by his enemies. They saw weakness in those tears. I, on the other hand, saw strength in those tears. And here's why. I believe Van Dyke was getting emotional because he is a man of faith and his faith is his good works as a Christian man with tremendous responsibility over God's people were being tested. Christ showed his humanity when he wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. Is it not possible that the judge was weeping at the loss of something as important to a lawyer and judge as the loss of anything else? The further destruction of the rule of evidence. I believe Judge Van Dyke was looking at this nation's future and could not hold back. And since when did these socialist Democrats have the power to eliminate our right to due process? Whether it's Judge Van Dyke, Justice Kavanaugh, or President Trump, if they declare you the enemy, apparently you have no rights to due process. I have a question. 
Who died and left them, boss? I believe the Honorable Judge Van Dyke saw a future nation where men and women of faith are attacked not for their opinions of the law, but for their faith. A future nation where a judge is most useful when he or she acts as a political tool of the deep state and not as a respected jurist. A future nation where the rules of evidence are replaced by rumor and hearsay. It must be devastating to a man like Judge Van Dyke to see this all happening right before his own eyes. I believe Judge Van Dyke saw our future and wept for us and not for himself. Rumor has it. That is the monologue.